graduated with an associate's degree and went to, uh, <clears throat> didn't have any money. So Lou, the recruiter, got me, a, you know, just signed me up for full-time work, and they sent me to Cape Canaveral, uh, which was part of, uh, again, the Atlas Missile System. The Atlas Missile System was for uh, the military, right? It was a military Air ICBM? Force. Oh, Air Force, yeah. Yeah, it was an Air Force project. It was it an ICBM or something, an intercontinental? Yeah, it was the first intercontinental ballistic missile, the first one. And uh, so I was associated with it, you know, when they were doing uh, some of the initial launches of that thing. It was pretty exciting times. And this was this uh, be just after Sputnik and probably right not too far after? Yeah, uh, 1958 was the year, right. Now, the, you know, there, there was all those missiles down there. They were never successful with the Vanguard, which was the Navy thing. Uh, they launched the first uh, U.S. satellite. Uh, Werner von Braun did that in uh, literally manually with a modified Redstone rocket, uh, just so they could say they were in the space. And as a satellite, a few years later, I actually got to meet Warner Von Braun. Really? At RIT, yeah. We had dinner with him one evening. A bunch of, uh, a bunch of us honor students. He was in the city, and they invited us to, uh, to have dinner with his dignitary, and it turned out that's who it was. <coughs> Did you uh, get a chance to talk oh, to him? Yeah. No, no, he was a good guy. Yeah, he, he didn't live long. Uh, he, uh, he didn't live long. Uh, after that, I don't think how long. I don't think he lived past his mid-60s. Hmm. But an interesting man, to say the least, and very friendly man. Hmm. Yeah. So you're uh, in Cape Canaveral. You're working on the Atlas uh, missile. Um, what were you doing there? Oh, the, the final, the, most of the time was, in, was basically General Electric had a study contract to measure the attenuation of radio signals through the flame of the rocket. So they had different positions along the coast where they would, they would basically track the rocket optically we did that manually with two guys sitting on an old gun turret, hmm. cranking away, just tracking, it. tracking it. And then we were receiving the radio signal, and we compare the data, depending on, on the position of the rocket, as to where the uh, uh, as the attenuation of various frequencies. So I was at one trailer, which was up north of the Cape. Oh, uh, no, it's down south of the Cape at Patrick, Patrick Air Force Base. Uh, so there was four of us out there that <clears throat> literally did nothing except calibrate every morning, <laughs> wait for a shoot to happen, which was maybe once a month, if you're lucky, and play cards. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we did. So I got to learn how to play a lot of poker. <laughs> <clears throat> and it was the uh, first time you were probably out of uh, Syracuse, or, or I mean Rochester, right? Oh, so yeah. a different environment there, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, Cocoa Beach was one of those uh, driving beaches in the, in the 50s, so you could drive your car on the beach. and You know, it was fun times. Did you ever go to Daytona while you were down there, the stock car races? Or? Uh, I went up there. That's be They were just beginning to build the the... Five, the you know, two and a half mile speedway the year I was there. I never went to the race on the beach, no. Did, did you have an interest in cars at that point? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I had an interest in, uh, and I used to follow uh, the NASCAR guys when they were to come to Rochester twice a year. Hmm. I'd go out there, and uh, me and a fellow by the name of Bill Blez did that, and... Uh, We'd hitchhike out to the fairgrounds. When these guys would show up, they'd smuggle us in in the cars, and then we'd wash the cars and 
and they let us stay out there to watch the race. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people that were there at the time were guys like, you know, Richard Petty's father. Wow. Lee Petty and uh, the Flock Brothers. Uh, you know, a lot of people like that. Dutch Hogue. Uh, some relatively famous drivers. That ultimately, uh, Herb Thomas, people like that. And uh, that's, you know, that's they, they were racing on dirt in those days. Uh, but, you know, that's that basically uh, it's been a, a lifelong passion, this car racing.